And while people are joining, we, we can't just go to Sargon without celebrating distribution one. So I don't know what the right celebration thing is in here. Josh, you usually have some kind of background or something like to, to go. Yeah, there's the hat. Oh, sorry, yeah, the clap. Back, back, to, back to normal. Um, I just, so I just got back on Twitter today for this and I sent a tweet that mentioned several views. So um, I think it's, it goes without saying that there was a lot that went into this and it's, it's nice to, it's nice to be for that to be done. So. It's one of those like silent, I, I, so many people are like, yes, yeah, so what, like, like what, what really changed for them? Like basically this is just the stuff that everything that works for cloud native works because this thing has been there for several years. I mean, it, it is probably kind of interesting that it's an unsung hero in many ways. So kudos to you guys. All right, with that, we are, well, we're two minutes after, but wait, how much more we want to wait, we can. So Sargon, the floor is yours. Cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've discussed this one before. Um, I went ahead and I talked to our uh, crypto people internally and discussed the other models around how can we possibly build a secure mechanism to deduplicate uploads um, where there is a mixed model of trust between trusted people and untrusted people that have access to the same uh, registry with different repositories in the trust model being associated with repositories. Um, they basically spent like an hour tearing me down being like, there's no way to do this. Um, and I mean, they came up with some more esoteric uh, solutions like, uh, you know, you talk to repo A, it gives you an encrypted token, you pass that back to repo B, repo B can then verify that token and you, know, you can make that uh, uh, timing attack tolerant. Uh, unfortunately, I think that that is outside of the scope of um, the discussion or the, the proposal that I put together. And the idea there is just that if you had a special parameter, specifically the digest parameter, the repository um, would respond in a, uh, a specific manner that would say this um, blob has already been uploaded and give you the location of that blob as opposed to uh, giving you the uh, accepted and then the upload location instead. Um, and then just the trust model there is a trust model where uh, either all repositories have equivalent trust. Um, so the, uh, like you, know, you have one password to get access to the entire uh, registry or two where you have a per repository trust model and you're not worried about um, people being able to take a given digest and uh, use that to steal data from other people. The thing that, so we've been, and this is part of where I know enough to know what can be done, but not exactly how it's implemented. Because we support cross repo mounting and ACR. And I meant to talk to Sajay to ask him how we were doing this. Because what I thought I was reading you suggesting was if I'm based on Alpine and I push image one, can I push image two that's also based on Alpine? And you basically want to share the Alpine layers. The question is whether you, do you did those Alpine layers have to go into an Alpine repo or could they just been in, in repo one versus repo two and get shared? Because that, that's the kind of the basic model that I know we support today in ACR. I, I think that the idea is, and this is, this is the way that the like uh, Docker distribution works is that the blob store is independent of the repositories. So um, the problem with the, current cross repository mount API call is you have to have built off of Alpine 
um, in the repository that you were working in, or not the repository, registry, excuse me, that you were working in. So like, let's say that you're using uh, ACR for everything, you would have had to use the base Alpine layer from ACR and then push back to ACR because the cross repo mounting is only within the same instance of the registry. And in addition to that, you have to track the provenance of each blob. So uh, with the rise of like stateless builders, um, they just kind of download the blobs and don't really have like a database to say where these came from. Um, our specific problem is someone will go build from Ubuntu upstream, um, which is like pr pretty tiny. It's like two or 300 megs. Um, and then they're pushing a layer to our internal registries. And this means they have to re-push those, those layers every time because you can't actually do a cross repo mount there. So I was trying to figure out is that they, cause different registries have different auth models, right? This is a, the, one of the things that we didn't get standardized, which is fine, right? It's part of the differentiations. Like how, if they have, I think the question is, and maybe it's, it really is up to each registry how they want to do it. Um, and it, it, which is a freedom because if there's a defined easy way, then different people, just the same way storage could be implemented differently. Um, so how can we do that in a generic way so that you can do something super special if what you're doing is unique to you guys and you know, the different cloud providers that are serving lots of different customers, whatever can do it in, in a way as well. I mean, so in this model, um, it addresses the, once you have access to the registry, you have access to the entire registry use case. Um, and it also serves the, I have access to individual repositories with read and or write permissions, but I do not have access or, but the registry is not um, trying to hide what information that it contains. So what you would need to do there for, in order to support that auth model is when the user push or tries to do this dedupe, you check the blob store. Does this blob exist in the blob store? If this blob exists in the blob store, then see if any of the other repositories that they have access to have this blob in it. Are you uh, talking about cross repo deduplication? I mean, a cross registry deduplication. So for example, uh, copy a blob from one instance to another instance? It's cross repo, but with the idea that the uh, repo may be mirrored, but the user is not aware that the repo has been mirrored. I see. Okay. Okay. And shouldn't have to know, right? It's like we, it should just work for them. That's kind of like the premise. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like everyone kind of mirrors like a bunch of the base images from Docker hub. Um, like I think AWS ECR does this now, uh, Google container registry does this like Docker distribution has a feature where you can say like, just do this. Um, but the user might not have their from being that registry. So like even more specifically in our model, we have uh, six registries around the world. And if you have the from as like US East one, and then you try to push to US West two, even though it might ha be able to dedupe, it, like there's no way the client could know to do the cross repo mount call. So that's the thing I was trying to figure because like with, with the NACR, we, we debated the whole shared cache thing and then people uh, scared us on what could be hacked into a digest and the layers so we actually don't share across uh, customers registries the as long as that digest is available it doesn't matter like what repos in it if it if that re, if the user has access to it from a creds then we allow it to be deduped but there is this is the part that I, I always forget I have to get, double check is unless it was initiated from my client, somehow my client doesn't know. So it actually does go up and gets tossed. So there is a wasted upload of that blob for it to get before it gets deduped. And it'd be, that's the part where I'd love to see if there's a, I called it a handshake, but I wasn't trying to, I was more referring to some piece of data that can go up and say, nope, I already have that. Don't even bother sending it to me. I mean, and this is kind of why, 
this is why the digest is passed as part of the upload initiation. And when you pass the digest with the uh, descriptor, um, the registry can then like, it's effectively the handshake. It just needs to then perform right. the auth model to make sure that the user is not trying to be bad. So that all sounded good, but maybe I'm missing the gap. So this, this sort of sounds like there's a, a fixed auth or a, you know, a fixed ownership. It sort of flies in the face of data being stored here and some certain European laws. No, no, we, it's definitely a content discovery. And, that, and that's what I was kind of liking what Sargon was saying is if, if I'm up saying, here's the digest I'm going to upload, it doesn't matter what repo it's in because the digest by themselves are unique. If it says, here's a digest I'm about to upload and the registry can see that, oh, I've got that digest. By the way, where it's stored, you have permissions to it. Then it should be able to return back going, got it, keep going. And there's no discovery to your point because they already had permissions to it. Mike, you got a inquisitive look on your face today. Well, I mean, so 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 they've got a shot and they used it, right? And then we duped it. And then and then I changed my mind on my initial push, right? And I and I change in my repo, I, I say, okay, make this private now. And yeah, yeah, I I, I admit that there's there, there still could be a shot out there living around, but you should no longer be able to log in and use it. So there needs to be some, you know, some way to be able to make, you know, a shop private again, or, you know, not available for, you know, other, other people to, to push, even though, yes, they initially pushed it, you know, there needs to be some, some way that we can, we can own our data. Um, I mean, but this is the way that distribution works right now, which is if you do, if I, I Docker push to repo. If I, I have an image called uh, Foo, and Foo is built from Alpine, and I push Foo as Foo once, and then Foo as Bar once, and then Alpine decides to go offline, and like let's say, say they take their repository entirely off Docker Hub, that blob will still exist and be shared amongst the Foo and Bar repositories, and it is unrevocable in the current distribution the model that is out there. Yeah. I mean, we don't, it doesn't actually ref count. It does a, a full table scan, but yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. It's just, you're, you're, you're bringing up an interesting thing in the context of standards now. Right. But, but I, I, I I'm just I, wondering. if the registry needs, if the registry's blob storage model is tied to the auth authorization model and authentication model, that I think is a independent thing that the registry can do. And that is like, if that is the auth model, um, which is not the Docker distribution auth model, it can then say, I don't want to support this feature, please go away. And when it says don't support the feature, it just basically reverts back to what it would do normally. So it's not even like it's a failure state. It's like, it, if I push to the same repo, you know, the mounting is, you know, it says, oh, I already have that blob. So the fact that the blob might be in another repo that I have permissions to is a totally transient state. So the beauty of it is different registries have implemented this caching, uh, deduping in different ways, which is perfect, right? Like public registries do it one way, private might do it different. What I saw happening was a, you defined a way that registries can implement what's you, what they feel like they need to do for whatever reason. If a customer doesn't want to share layers with any other customer, then you know that's something that could be cut off, and this API does, just continues to function. What you seem to be describing is like the, the DNS for blobs. Um, I don't know. Is, is this already implemented on distribution? It, it seems to me it is. Uh, according to Phil, source repo. Kind of. So there are some clients that when you say, say you pull the Ubuntu image, 
you build something from it and then you push it somewhere else, will track that you pulled Ubuntu and can then, if you're pushing it to the same repository, if you're pulling from Docker Hub and pushing to Docker Hub, can do a cross blob mount for you and solve this problem. But that assumes same registry. So the case that Sargon is pointing out here is say I'm a user, I've created an image that's from Ubuntu and I'm pushing it to my private registry. And now let's say I build an updated version of it in a completely clean environment that doesn't have the old image and I push it to the same registry, even the same repository namespace that Ubuntu layer is already pushed. It's already there. I don't need to push it again, but my local client has no idea that it's already there unless the registry says, hey, you don't need to push that. I already have it, which doesn't exist and, today. And the idea that the registry can decide whether it wants to acknowledge, allows registries to decide their, their liability, their security model, their caching models, so that, you know, let's, and I, I actually don't know this. I, I think this is what you're saying, Sargon. Did you guys run your own registry? You're not using like AWS's ECR or something? Um, right, we're just uh, using distribution. Okay, so the point is, is you can you can code exactly what you want, and do the handshake while in a, in AWS with the larger ECR one, they might have a different policy, and it's totally fine. Your client can pull from ECR, push to yours, and there's nothing special. Like, well, the, the client would have to find out about this handshake thing that we're talking. Tell me what to call it besides handshake, but uh, this interchange, and it allows customers, users to do exactly what they want to do in theirs without breaking what other cloud providers or products might want to do differently. Yeah, I mean, there's more sophisticated approaches to solving this problem where the handshake gets progressively more sophisticated and allows you to do things like, you know, what John said, which is like, um, how do you avoid the, um, or, or like, how, how do you deal with the timing attack problem? Um, Unfortunately, talking to like our security folks about this, it is really hard to get that right, especially if you're operating something like an Azure or a GCR. The way that AWS solves this, and in you know, any AWS people feel free to correct me, but at least the last time I looked, is that each ECR instance is dedicated to a given account. Um, and that means that within that account, the S3 storage is also dedicated and they don't do things like share blobs between different registries. Um, so that kind of solves the problem for like that registry model. But when you get into this like hyper shared model like GCR, then the benefits of a more sophisticated handshake model become super useful, but that's like, uh, it's pretty complicated, unfortunately. But even in the GCR, because it's something we do the same thing that ECR does is that we by default don't do any sharing. Um, and G, it sounds like GCR does and, and whether it's true or not, the point is, is that allows the register or even the customer. I mean, I, I, I would imagine that a customer on GCR, if they wanted to say, I don't want to share layers, that is a feature that they could choose to implement. Um, because all of these are just the multi tenant services where we're abstracting a lot of this. Uh, so Brandon's comment is you can automatically dedupe from the head. Is that the, I'm not following what that flow would look like. I was uh, actually going to ask if, you know, what if the client uh, checks whether the blob already exists before pushing? I really much to do that. John's saying so. Take it away, John. Yeah, so, so my, my first PR as a professional adult was to change Docker's client behavior to send a head request uh, before doing anything um, for reasons that you may understand now. Um, so just to clarify, GCR does not uh, deduplicate blobs between projects by default. Uh, just want to get that out there. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to apply one way. I was trying to capture what Sargon was saying. It sounded like a good benefit that we debated. So however you want to call it. Which is like single tenant versus shared multi tenant architecture, uh, which I think is what Sargon was getting at. Uh, Brandon, if I'm following, if you do the so, head, go ahead. 
So yeah, kind of to piggyback on what John was saying, if, if the client's already doing a head request, I feel like a lot of the stuff that's in the PR that you're putting is to say, how can we verify that you already know the content of this digest so that you're not just putting random stuff out there and trying to get access to something you shouldn't have access to? Is that, is that my understanding of the PR that we're looking at? So that was the original idea of like, can we come up with a secure way to do that? The conclusion was, no, we can't come up with a secure way to do that. Um, but you do need some way to say, do this cross repository mount from any repository that I have access to. And as a client, I want to be oblivious to where that blob might come from. Just make sure that yeah. it doesn't violate the registry authentication model and authorization model. Yeah. So trying to bridge the halfway point, because I know you got people like Steve over there that wants to make sure that everything's private. Nobody has access to anything. You could potentially say, here are the public things. We're mirroring a bunch of stuff from Docker Hub, all the main library images that everybody uses. This is our store of public blobs that we don't mind if anybody has access to. And then when you do the head request, if you do a head request against one of those blobs, that automatically does the dedupe right then for you and says, yeah, we have it over here already. No need to send it again. But the head, so the head, are you proposing that the head request mutates the store and links the blob into the repository? Yeah, right then, as soon as the that, client checks. I think that violates some HTTP musts, but you know, why not? Um, I, you could also have some protocol that says like, the client could say, does this exist? And as a header, like, I really want it to, uh, you know, please mutate for me, I don't care about RFCs. Alternatively, the registry could reply like, it does not exist, but it does over here. Please send a mount request for us. Do you have access to this one? You know, something like that. I feel like just by adding this digest parameter, it kind of encapsulates all of that logic server side in a nice bundle. Uh, I mean, at the so, end of the day, the beauty is digest is unique. So as, as long as you send the digest up, the registry can decide whether you have access to it or not. And you know, to, to Brandon's point, whether or not there's a, a shared mirror aspect or not, or, or, or a team that, that that company has made their layers available to others. The point is, is that does the customer, does the user have access to that digest? If they do, please don't send it. Don't waste time. So, um... Our behavior today is very similar to what you're describing for the mount, uh, sorry. So instead of having the digest parameter, uh, if you change that digest string to mount, um, it's basically half of a cross repo mount without any from parameter. Um, we just use that as a signal to do this. Uh, and since it's a post request, it works. And it doesn't violate any RFCs. Wait, is that in the spec? Cross repo mounting? No, it's not. It's just like oh, some okay. liberties I took five years ago, basically. <laughs> and uh, I, okay. if we standardize that, that's fine. I, I guess is there a pre so like the nicety that I see of doing it for the digest is now you have one HTTP round trip for uploads versus the head mount being discrete or the mount head something else, I guess, being, being different like that. Um, yeah, the, the, you can do it on head, but the problem with that is you're violating RFCs and it's not clear that the user does want it to be there. They might just be doing an existence check for the sake of an existence check. Um, if you do it on the post, it's a clear intention. Like I want this to be there, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think we were talking also about eventual consistency models previously. And when you get into like, um, mutable operations have a different cost model and a different consistency than read only operations. If every head now needs to be a open, a mutable transaction, uh, eh. I'd be in favor of like making the from parameter on cross repo mounting optional um, and maybe just call it mounting. I, I want to do some other weird things with mounting that I haven't proposed yet, but that, that seems like a reasonable path to go down because it's 
it doesn't add any new concepts. It just kind of like breaks one into two sub concepts. I, I guess the only downside I see if expanding the mount capability is that it requires one more round trip to find out where the blob then actually is. Um, I was thinking if you don't have a front parameter in the registry, you can tell that you have access to that blob. It just does the mount for you without you having to tell it where it's from. But then on miss, you still have to reinitiate upload? No, on a miss, you get a, a 202. And this is already in the spec. I clarified this in the spec because it was very confusing. So then, if you get a 202 back, you just continue with the upload. So there's one round trip. So like mount basically works the same way as starting an upload and multi-part upload? Yeah, yeah, I clarified that too because that was confusing. Uh, and so I, this is very consistent behavior across <laughs> every interaction. So I, I'm in favor. In, is, is mount a required or optional part? I forget. It's optional. OK. I think. I don't know. It was years ago. Do you know if we just add a mount and then like the from parameter, like it, will any registry have faulty behavior if you omit that, like throw an error or? I mean, this is where maybe testing some of this and trying it across a couple of shit would be a great test. Because again, I have to, I, I know we support parts of this, and you know, obviously GCR does, and I don't, I don't know Phil yet. You've ramped up on exactly what ECR does yet. Um, but prototyping this out would be really helpful. Or have you already done this with what you've done in distribution? I mean, yeah, with distribution, we can we can pretty easily push up our stuff uh, here. Um, with um, the 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 like distribution behavior is pretty liberal in terms of like you forget to put parameters in and it'll usually accept it. Or you put extra parameters in, it'll usually accept it. Um, the behaviors for other registries, I don't know how they work, which is what I'm a little bit more worried about um, expanding, say, the mount call. But if other registries are similarly liberal, then I think you know the mount call makes sense as well. I'm kind of at a loss of what to do, uh, or like what even to test. Um, so I, I was certain to make sure the conformance tests expect like a failed amount to return a 202 continue or accept it or whatever. Uh, from that perspective, I think registries that like don't do something like that on a failed amount are maybe non-conformant. You can maybe use the spec as a bludgeon, but um, I think the best thing to do would be to test uh, those registries. And if this behavior is safe across most of them, then you start maybe getting this into clients. Um, there's also like a weird thing that you, you don't want to be default on registries because of timing attacks. And so I don't know how you would roll this out um, and have everyone happy about it. I mean, if it like in distribution, optional. in distribution, you can set like, I think actually by default, if you don't put anything in the auth field, it's like auth is off. So like, if auth is off, then like do this. If auth is not off, then be conservative. But from what I can tell, most people are running auth on the registry off, and they just have a thing in front of the registry, like an AOB or something that's doing auth for them, or auth end for them, excuse me. I, I mean, this seems reasonable to me, especially if you're only changing the things you care about. Um, I might open a distribution proposal to like, soften the cross repo mounting stuff a little bit and then see what people respond with and like what implementations would be broken. Yeah, I mean, I think like I, I'm just reading the thing there a little bit. Definitely saying that you can drop the from. Um, like the from is optional. Um, seems to be 
totally reasonable. And, and I'd be interested in what distribution spec maintainers have to say about that, because I have opinions, but I don't have a legit TM backwards, so they don't really matter. But given it's KubeCon, perhaps no one's not on. Oh, it's Stephen Day. Hi. Have you been listening the whole time, or did you just drop in? No, I had, I had a meeting covering this one, so I just dropped in. Okay, I can bring you up to speed. Uh, we want to drop the from parameter and cross repo mounting so that it's optional, so that you can ask the registry to cross repo mount something from, our, from anywhere as long as you have access to it. Cons, it's susceptible to timing attacks. Pros, it's there's no problem other than if you're up, if you have a problem with being susceptible to timing attacks. I'd have to think about that. I mean, um, so you basically give it the mount argument, and then, I mean, I think for like layer things like layers, it'd probably be okay, where you have a cryptographic hash. But for tags, it would be a little bit more susceptible to the timing attack. You can mount tags um, right now. I think it's just for blobs. You cannot mount tags right now. No, I think I think just blobs. Yeah, if it's just blobs, I don't see the. I don't quite see the timing attack, but uh, I, don't, I haven't thought it through yet. The, a timing attack, if you have an auth Z plugin, because the first check you do is does the blob exist in the repository? And then from that blob, you get all of the, or excuse me, the registry, then you get all the uh, uh, repositories that reference that blob. And then from those registries, you see if the user has access to any of those. Um, the timing attack shows up because if that blob doesn't exist at all, you then um, reveal that uh, uh, like the error happens earlier than if you do the actual auth Z part of the check. I see what you're saying. Yeah, there's like an unbounded query to, to determine if you have access to the I was going to do this in several weeks, but I'd also like to expand the cross repo mounting stuff. I don't know if we want to talk about that. I, I mean, I guess for what I've been proposing, if people don't think that it's a, a bad path to go down, I can make a PR formalizing language in the spec. Um, Unless people for 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 John's reproposal, um, or if people want another round of discussion after uh, kind of drawing out the issue, uh, I can bet you depending on what what folks want. I recommend like revving the suggestion and then uh, making sure we have some distribution spec or more distribution spec people present. I don't I don't see how this exposes the the repo set, um, but maybe I'm missing something. I'm I'm looking at the spec right now to refresh my memory. Um, so you, sorry, and you're arguing that it, it would expose the repo set from by waiting for that access check on, uh, or do we come back and, and ask the client for more access checks in that case? It, it would expose the existence of a blob in the registry that you don't have access to. Oh. It's minor, but it is something. It, I, it's but That's also a timing. You can do that. You can make sure the auth is enforced. I mean, we only we would only ever expose that it's available if the person has access to it. Whether it's push or pull, it's a different question. Like if I have pull access, like I should, then I shouldn't have to push it because I can be mounted. It, some specific some other team might say, unless you have push access, you you shouldn't be able to cross repo. I don't agree with that, but that could be a decision a registry makes. It, it's specifically so, problematic in the um, case where you might have like either censored content or where you might have like private content that you don't want people to know that you have. So like if someone's auditing you to see if you have like, I don't know, Oracle 
in your registry. Um, that's the kind of rough kind of attack that, that that's problematic. But don't you think right. it should be up to the to the registry owner to kind of decide whether that they they want to expose themselves for that? Because like like when we wrote this spec around the time like concerns about exposing information about the existence of blobs was was kind of a that, that was a hot ticket security item at the time. Um, over the last years, I I haven't seen that be much of a security issue. It just doesn't. It's it's more theoretical than than practical. Um, but you could imagine one registry provider saying, "Well, hey, you need the from parameter uh, to make this work. It's it's just required because we want this level of security." But you could imagine another, maybe like an internal registry provider, uh, where the where the the client set is a lot more limited than say something that's open to the public. They might decide that, "Hey, we want to drop this from parameter to make our uh, push a little bit more efficient in our infrastructure. I, I guess the language can be something like the registry can optionally validate the from parameter. Yeah, or I mean, or it could ignore it, right? And mount it from somewhere else as long as the user has access to it. Right. right. I, I think that's a part of the, the, the yeah. optional, optionally validate and require it to be correct or something or yeah. required. We, to be there. we could make the, the from parameter more of a hint than anything um, from the registry's perspective. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was my concern. I'm glad you're here, Stephen. The, we, we do have a pattern where if pod A pulls an image and has authentication, it gets cached up. And then later on, Kubernetes could run pod B. And if pod B has a SHA, you know, that, that's already been pulled, they can, they can you know, pull by SHA. Um, unfortunately, and they didn't have authentication, right? It'll just get cached. And we're about to push a PR in Kubernetes to fix that hole. Um, and, and now it sounds like it might be opened up again, but as long as, as long as we, you know, we're making sure that the, you know, on, on the push of the SHA that they add original authentication, then that's, then that's fine. A, a little nervous. <laughs> We're, we we, we want to believe that in a in a Kubernetes environment on one one host you can have two tenants and you don't you don't have to worry about you know them sharing accidentally sharing you know blobs. Are you partitioning the ten the tenants by the access to the uh, pull service account? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's like it's more it sounds that, like Mike. more of a client thing where the client should be able to keep track of who has access to what, because if it writes any storage, you still have the cross mount of permissions problems. It's not really a registry side is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I'm just making I mean, it's somewhat related. Keep it that I, way. I think yeah. it's a, uh, I think it's a parallel problem that if you look at the pods and then the registry space kind of in the same regard, you can ex accidentally expose the blob to a, to a user in both cases. Um, I just had a quick comment. I'm still trying to understand um, Sargon's proposal, like the depth, but uh, with what John's proposing with making from optional, does that kind of invalidate some of what you're proposing with the. I uh, seed and all that stuff. So the, the 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 seed and stuff is like invalid. Uh, if you look in the comments in the issue, I basically state that uh, our security uh, folks have evaluated that and said that it. Like, they have a counter proposal on how to make it work. The counter proposal is just very complicated. Um, so the I think that the uh, successor that I proposed was adding an additional capability to the standard push initiation, but what John proposed, I think is superior to my proposal and just dropping the requirement of the from parameter and allowing the registry owner to make the decision of how they want that to be enforced is, is probably a superior approach. Um, yeah, someone's typing something. Um, yeah, I think like as far as getting it into the spec, like just seeing how the last year, uh, the comments back and forth and stuff, like something like that seems like it would get in quicker. Like just 
realistically versus coming up with a JSON uh, schema or something. Yeah, I agree. If you can prototype this out and then we can test it, especially if, it, if part of this is already in there, then test it out with a client and then we can just test it across a couple of registries. And then what yeah, are the I mean, proposal would be? I can I, I can uh, create a PR or not a PR I guess a PR for distribution with this and um, what so I've been using the Google registry client but I know the Google registry client isn't a fully fledged client is there a preferred client for like reference do we have a reference client there there are some uh, which Google mine Go Container Registry I'll help you if you want to use that we can we can do whatever that's fine. So, okay. so so let me let me ask this question if a registry ignored the from parameter and then performed the blob mount and did its own access control checks would it not be compliant to the spec i i think that's exactly what would make it compliant with the spec but like like it right now it says the from parameter should be passed by the client. Um, but I think that just dropping the from requirement would make it so that clients didn't need to do the tracking on their side to see who pushed or where did each blob come from. Um, yeah. So, so like yeah. first the registry would have to relax the requirement of the from parameter and then subsequently the clients would, um, would be able to do that as well. With regards I, I to provenance, sorry, go uh, go ahead, John. Uh, no, I'm, I'll go after you, that's fine. I was going to go on a tangent. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I may have missed something, but I figured that the, the uh, additional metadata that we were adding to uh, the image spec would account for trying to figure out the provenance of the images, uh, such as the base image uh, annotation. I don't know that this would affect that. I guess you could implement a registry in such a way that it would be a problem, but I can't imagine anyone has. My understanding that uh, the Sargon's concern here is that the burden is on the client to verify, uh, to find the uh, provenance. But I would figure that the um, the base image amnitation would help the client do that. But but like n people aren't necessarily going to upload like. Ubuntu, or not Ubuntu is a bad example because it's like a standard image, but like we have our own internal standard images that we use that are like intermediary images. Like we have a go, we have like a Python image um, that's like Python dash NFLX. Um, that's not going to get pushed to all of our registries that are our production registries because that's a development image. So if you try to say mount from Python dash NFLX, that repository is not going to exist on the production registries. But would, but wouldn't you be pushing like a different image to the production registries? Like you'd be pushed, you won't, you won't deliberately tr be trying to push a debug image to a production registry. R right, but like all of our standard, like all of our Python production stuff is built on top of that Python, you know, three, four dash NFLX. So like if I push, you know, Python program one, and then like, you know, John pushes Python program two, he shouldn't have to push all those base layers um, again. Right. Um, so, okay, uh, I see what you're saying. This is, this is in the context of one registry that you're uh, using in production, yeah? Uh, yeah, or like end registry. That, that, all, that, that, all, that all share the same um, you, custom image. Yeah, so uh, custom, uh, layers. Custom, uh, custom layers. Yeah. 
so, so sorry. And I, I think that even if you filled in the, uh, the from with a bunch of garbage on the client in the, in the registry still mounted the blob for you, like that would be sufficient, right? I don't know if we want to say that we accept garbage. Um, well, I mean, like, like noise, like, you know, just uh, John Johnson's typing or whatever, right? Like, uh, you know, just keyboard smashing, right? Like, would it, like, if I did that, if I said mount from here and it was just like, whatever, it, but it performed the mount, like, would that endpoint not be correct? Oh, yeah. That, 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 if, yeah. The, if the from parameter was an optional parameter and was optionally validated, that would do exactly what I want. Well, I mean, it, do we require that it's validated? We do, yeah. That's that's really hard to verify remotely, though. Yeah, like the actual yeah, point. the actual validation toolkit can't really prove that it's being validated. It can it can kind of kind of sort of guess, but I don't think we'd say a registry is non-compliant if it doesn't validate the from parameter, right? Because it's hard to test. Uh, my my reading of the spec language. Um, it just says it, you can do this, um, but it doesn't say like it must also include the from parameter. It just says you can do this. Uh, we could clarify that from is optional. And I don't think that would even be breaking for my view of the university. Probably clarify that from is optional for servers, not necessarily for clients. It'd have to be optional for both like to work. Yeah, I guess it would have yeah. to be optional for both, huh? I think that's fine. This seems like well, mostly a, because I already implemented this. One line change <laughs> in the spec. So instead of a head request, clients should just make a spurious blob request without a from to hope that the blob can be mounted. That, that doesn't seem all that different, does it? it it's better, right? You save one round trip. It's the same, though, as just letting the head be mutative. Yeah, but that violates some RFCs, and that's naughty. <laughs> yeah, but you're, I think to John's point, you're already getting ready to try to do a blob upload. You're expecting back a location that says, here's the location you're going to get, and instead it says, hey, I've already got it. You're done. Oh, it's yeah. like this, this heads will be cash. Uh, heads will be cached by like CloudFront and Squid and Varnish and the other 18 different things that we have in front of our registries. Yeah, like you may, you may want to still do the head because it's generally pretty cheap and quick. Um, but in theory, you could only do the post. Um, like a bottle, it could be a, a single request ever, uh, which would be nice. Or, I mean, you do both gonna, at the same time. I was going to say that, yeah, I wonder why there's this hesitancy of doing the head request first. You're getting just a, a manifest. Um, and, and 300 milliseconds. <laughs> I mean, at least you can figure out, OK, fine, uh, this manifest has uh, this, this blob that is uh, the same as the blob that I have here. So client says, okay, I skip that one and push the rest. I, I don't think that there's any problem with doing the head. Um, I think that like wasting 300 milliseconds is not good, but um, I think that the head definitely should not do a write because like one that violates the HTTP specs, two that definitely just won't work on CloudFront. Um, and yeah, just, it, it like from a registry perspective, like you should not have to do read write work on a head internally within the code. If if I get a head and speculatively preload my cache, like eh, like how bad is that? 
like if it knows that it exists, you do the head and then you speculatively preload the cache. And then when the, the Git comes and you're serving up the content and you block it while you're just like waiting a little bit for the content to show up, like how bad is that? If you, wait, who's speculative? The like client loads it? The, uh, the, the registry, right? Oh yeah, I mean the registry can can do that. Um, it's just like for the most part, if 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 I do a head, well, like we have like a we have a lot of registry instances, so like that's gonna be icky. Um, but like even if you do that, then the um, I guess like since the second request is not a head, that's okay. The problem is like if I do an upload and then like John doesn't upload to the same registry and my head got a 404, he's going to see the same 404 even though he didn't have to like, like even though I successfully did the upload. Yeah, I'm, I'm wary of flaunting HTTP semantics too much. Um, like I don't have a problem if registries violate them, but we shouldn't encourage it in this back out thing. <laughs> I, I mean, like the, the people, like the distribution documentation says, here's CloudFront. Like, it, it's what people do. Okay, it seems to me like everyone agrees this is a good idea, but there's a lot of fun to be had in like ironing out the details in terms of registry and client behaviors. And I think we should do it. I don't know. Anyone disagree? I, I, Anyone strongly agree? I think that given we've like reduced this down to a one line, I can write the one line and then, you know, we can go iron out the details. Sounds good. It looks like Ram did a, a post something for Zot that was able to test with Scopio. So whichever, whichever client you use, it sounds like we can test this out. The distribution is easy enough to make change to these as well. Especially if it's Sorry, do you have a way to track overlap of blobs pushed concurrently? Like when you have the same blob that's pushed at the same time? Does that happen you, you a lot mean, in your infrastructure? In progress pushes? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't happen in our infrastructure ever. I mean, we do have a little bit of tracking about, about it because I think like when you try to do the S3 recombobulate call, it'll fail um, if that already existed. Um, but like when we've looked at that, it's so rare that we never bother doing anything clever there. Yeah. Uh, why do you ask? Oh, just uh, the, so the reason we didn't really do this like upload, so we, we didn't allow two separate clients to block the same upload was just because there's only a few cases in which they're going to like overlap. And most of the time, the push is happening in some sort of CI system that's serially, right? Where you'd like build an image then push it, build an image then push it. So you usually rely on the infrastructure to avoid those overlaps. But I do understand there are definitely use cases where you might have base layers that are getting pushed concurrently and you end up with uh, some kind of um, optimistic tries at it and then failures and then eventually they converge and that's not necessarily efficient. I mean, what, what so like our very specific process is our base OS team pushes the base layers. They send everyone an email saying, rebuild and redeploy your images. And then over the course of roughly three or four days, people will rebuild and redeploy all their images. Um, so it's not like a CI process. Although there is a CI process, that CI process doesn't actually do the upload and deploy for people. Yeah, if you get a new version, I mean, Alpine's kind of small, but if you took like Ubuntu, and if you have a new version of Ubuntu that gets pushed out, then you're not actually storing Ubuntu in your registry. That triggers two builds. In theory, they can be both race condition for who's going to push the Ubuntu layers first, but uh, it seems like relatively easy catching. Uh can I, can I steal five minutes at the end to talk about my thing? Are you satisfied? Okay, uh, someone brought this up earlier, and so I'll talk about it briefly, but I was planning to um, write a proposal as well about cross uh, registry blob mounting. Uh, I, in my head, I've been calling it cross origin blob mounting. Um, 
Cross registry? Is cross often, remote? Cross registry. Um, so for a lot of things, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, and a lot of registries have a single host name, like say Docker Hub. Um, but if you expose any type of variable in the host name, like uh, say the region or a project name, um, you can't take advantage of cross remote mounting at all. Um, and I was thinking about uh, and planning to implement something where you could indicate, I am trying to mount from this other origin. Uh, say I want to mount from US West 1 to US West 2. Um, and the registry knows, it's like, oh, I can do this faster than you. Let's not just serve you all these blobs for you to give them right back to me. Um, and it kind of solves a similar problem as just dropping the from parameter. But uh, I would be a little hesitant to mount across domains entirely without that, without a hint, like, no, I want it from this other registry. Uh, Steven, I'm interested the idea in your the server side. Is the idea you're doing a server side copy instead of the client pushing? Yeah, yeah. I basically just don't go over the internet um, and let it is a point to point copy once instead of, you know, serve it to the client and that's the client serve it, send it right back. Yeah, I mean, I generally think um, features that can service some sort of image promotion process. Uh, would be helpful. I'd like to like see what that like the top level idea for image promotion is. Um, this is something like I've kind of looked at over maybe the last six seven months, and the tooling there is not not great, just because you have to do this like pull and then push, um, and the options are basically like push everywhere before you're ready, or like uh, run it and then do some validation and then push it up when you do your promotion. So. Uh, I think it's an interesting problem. Um, I, I don't know specifically on how the credentials would work um, for that process, uh, but I think yeah. if you can get those two pieces right and get it semantically in place, it seems reasonable. Um, we can we can chat offline and 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 get you know some you can load this idea into my head a little bit more. Sounds good to me. I'll, I'll send a proper doc explaining this maybe later, but uh, I just wanted to float that in people's heads and get them excited. This seemed productive more than I expected. Yeah. Well, you, you think hey, you maybe, maybe, no, I'm just looking at what you thinking maybe if we had uh, our host tunnel, like in container D, we've got a group of mirrors. That you could do a push and then some have some new API. Where we could say, I want these are the ones we're going to be mirroring on pull, and I'd like to push right to all these. And here's my auth for each of them if they're all in the in the same domain, like Docker IO yeah. with a few, you know, few caches, that sort of thing. Something like that. And I think, depending on if the you know, if your target and source registry know exactly who you are, then there are some tricks you can do. But you can also do some clever things like, oh, we have a mirror of Docker Hub. They're trying to copy from Docker Hub. And this is my private, I logged on to all of them at the same time. Please trust me. <laughs> I like right. it. There, there could be, yeah, a lot of advantage there. Hey, before we go here, I just wanted to say hi to everybody and congratulations on the 1.0 um, across the board. It, it, it really looks great. I, I, I've been quiet. I know, uh, but uh, I'll try to join more meetings coming forward. I, I have uh, I have this blocked off on my work calendar now, so uh, I, I only got one meeting over it this time, so that's good. Um, maybe we can go for zero meetings next time. Um, but yeah, congratulations to everybody, and it, it, it looks really good. It's short and, and poppy, and uh, it captures like the original intent, and uh, it's a good base to build on. So congratulations, everybody. Welcome back. Cool. Good to see you. And with that, we're on time. We'll catch everybody else next week. Thanks, folks.